Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and we're here today to do our first Electric Quilt 8 lesson. And I don't have my screen maximized, and maximize would mean me clicking this little box to make it fill the complete screen. And that's because if I maximize it, there are certain parts of my screen that my screen recorder will not record. And I want to make sure that you see the entire Electric Quilt interface in this video. So we're going to pray that it is working this time. Now, what is Electric Quilt? Basically, Electric Quilt is a piece of software where you can design quilts prior to stitching. The purpose for that is that you can plan how you're going to use, say, orphan blocks. You can plan how your standard sampler quilt will look even before you do a stitch. You can play around with different design layouts prior to having to cut any fabric or waste any fabric. So it's a great tool for planning how to make a quilt. I also use it in designing my quilt patterns as well. So, when you open up Electric Quilt, you will come to this page. And we're going to do very basic Electric Quilt work for this first lesson. And then we're going to come back and do some more detailed things. Some things that you may be interested in doing on your own. So when you come into Electric Quilt, you have an area here that says you want to design a quilt. Do you want to draw a block? Or do you want to work with fabrics? So for our first lesson, we're just going to keep it very basic. We're going to design a quilt from scratch. When that happens, it brings you into the quilt layout. Now, you can see on our screen, it gives you a standard for what a basic quilt layout would be. You can go into your preferences, your settings in Electric Quilt, and you can change this. If you normally make quilts that are three by four squares, then you can tell it, make it three by four instead of four by four. Me personally, I don't care because I'm going to switch it out and make it do what I want it to do anyway. So up here at the top, you have, well up here at the top, you have your basic applications that you will work when you're working in I'm just going to say a Windows based system because that's what I'm using is a Windows based system and so I can only tell you what's up here for a Windows based system so these are like basic things that are sometimes up but the difference is that you've got work table libraries quilt and then you mostly will always have a help up at the top so you don't hardly ever have to go there. We'll go there when we need to. But if you want to explore those tabs, you're more than welcome to do that. My goal for today is just to show you how to make a basic quilt in Electric Quilt and then how to make it some changes to it. So we've got a new quilt. It's telling us that it's going to be a horizontal quilt. Do we want this quilt to be a quilt that is on point? We can make it so that it's a variable point. We can do baby blocks. We can do variable blocks. You can do a horizontal strip quilt. You can do a vertical strip quilt. You can do a one patch quilt. You can also do a photo patchwork quilt where you're dropping in photos. And then this arrow right here, if you click it, it will continue to go out so that you can get the last two options here. You can do a custom set quilt, which is just one blank, blank area that you're going to fill in. And then you can also tell it to open the library. So we're going to go all the way back over here and go back and just do a very basic setting quilt for right now. We're going to just do a horizontal layout. And then we're now going to click, you see these words here, layout, border, designs, print, and export. This is what's going to work us through the process of creating this quilt. So the first thing we want to do is click on layout. 
when you get to layout it's telling you the current size of this quilt that's sitting in this frame is 36 by 36. This is real important when you're trying to make a quilt a particular size. It always let you know what the sizes are based on the things that you change. So it's saying number of blocks. We want to do a three by four. So we've got 12 sampler blocks that we'd like to put into a quilt top. So I'm just going to change that to a three. Now you have finished size of blocks. And then you have this checkbox. It says keep width and height equal. You want to check that. There's two ways that you can change the size of a block. You can come over here. You can highlight this area type in the number but if you pull the slider and you have that box mark it would make both sliders move at the same time and we're just going to make these 12 inch blocks and once we get them to 12 inches we can change again you could have just come over here highlighted this and type that in so now we want to tell it what finished size of sashing that we want and so again, we've got these slider bars down here. We've got this box here that says keep height and width equal. And then we can tell it, let's say we want maybe a three inch sashing. So we just slide down to three. And we let the slider go. Now notice that we have our sashing in here, but we don't have any sashing along the outside edge. If you click this box that says include sash border, it will add that sashing in for you. So that's an option that you can also do. So now we've got the basic layout of our quilt. Our quilt currently has this border on it and with that border it is 48 by 63. So let's go over and click on our borders tab next. So we know that inside of here we already have a sashed border. So you can decide if you want to put a regular border here and then it has different styles of borders that you can put up here at the top. You've got a mitered border which means your corners here will be mitered. You would have to sew that miter in. You can do corner blocks in your border. You can do long verticals where your sides pieces are added on last. They're the longest. You can do long horizontal where your side pieces are added on first and then your top and bottom pieces are added. Or you can just tell it, I want to put blocks in here. You can also tell it you want half blocks, squares, you can make it diamonds. You can make you can make this whatever you want based on the different things. And I notice again you've got this double arrow highlighted where you can just keep going over and over and getting additional borders. So we're going to go back and we're actually going to pick the long horizontal border which means that we're going to be putting our side borders on first and now you get to tell it what size borders do you want now remember we've got a sash border here that's three inches so maybe a one inch border will help to offset some of the sizing that's going on with our quilt so i would just like to leave that border at one inches now i want to add another border and i can add another border but right here you have a block here you have a box that says clone the selected border and that's what i want to do if i click that it will add a border that's exactly the same as the border that's highlighted and i click the add now it's out here telling me that it's on border number two if i go over here and click on the inside border you will see where it says it's on border number one but if I go back over here and click I'm now on border number two and this will keep me in track with how many borders that I have this number two that's kind of faded out it tells you how many borders are actually in the quilt notice that again we got the size of the quilt here telling us what size quilt we're making and then we've got these buttons here we've got 
the left and right or the top and bottom or you can click all we're going to leave it at all we want to put our borders at six inches so I'm just going to take the slider bar move it over to six inches and when I drop it you can see now I have the border at six inches and it changed the size we now have a quilt that's 62 inches by 77 inches and that's what we're going to do with that now remember we were talking about all of these different options up here now that our border is wider you can see what some of these things will do maybe you might want cornerstones on your six inch border to make it have a little bit more detail maybe you might want to drop in some blocks if you drop in some blocks you can also tell it down here blocks and border how many blocks do you want so you know that you're working with six inch blocks you can leave it as is or you can um, just tell it I want more blocks or less blocks so we can make it so that each side has four sections we can make it so each side has five sections just depends on what you want so let's just leave it as the blocks having different sections for right now and now we want to go into design so I just clicked on my design tool up here and my screen is a little slow now because it's been recording for a while and that's the problem that I'm having with doing the screen records then my uh, system starts to slow down and you can see here we now have a basic quilt setting what I want to do you have little plus over here this is what saves your projects into electric quilt so I want to click that plus and it's going to ask me to give this untitled quilt design pattern that we're making a name and I'm just going to say this is T quilts videos and then I want to save it and it is important that you know where your files are being saved I've been using electrical for a long time I've already got my preferences set up for my file saving area so you need to make sure you know exactly where you are filing your blocks or filing your you need to know exactly where you are filing your file so that you can find them again okay so once we clicked on a design tab we come up with some new things that we can do here and some of them are not even highlighted so we're just going to work our way down to the ones that we would use if we were doing a straight sampler quilt now for the purposes of this video I'm just going to be using the blocks that are already inside of electric quilt I will come back and show you how to make some blocks in another video so we're at the block tools and under the block tools you get sketchbook blocks you've got all of these different tools and things that you can do with the blocks and then down in this section they even give you some basic standard blocks that you may want to use and then you can scroll over and you'll see these are the basic blocks that they just set into electric quilt that you can put into a quilt but there are a lot more other blocks in electric quilt how do you get those you click on this button here that says open library and it's going to pull up a block library and I'm just going to minimize this mine was open because I've been in them a lot <laughs> and so you've got these various different categories you've got classic piece contemporary piece foundation piece classic applique contemporary applique motifs stencils overlaid border blocks and sashing so we are going to go in here and we're just going to pick some blocks now I am just going to pick some blocks for the sake of this video and I am you can pick whatever blocks you want to pick that you want to put in your quilt so I'm going to do four patch blocks or maybe nine patch blocks let's go for nine patch 
Okay, so I am just going to basically go in here and pick out blocks that I like. And if you move your slider bar, you can have more blocks. Over here to the far right of your slider bar, it tells you how many blocks are in this particular category. So I'm just going to click on a block. And then to be able to use that block, you click up here and say add to sketchbook. Once I click add to sketchbook, that block has now disappeared because it's already there waiting for me to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick some more blocks, any blocks, it doesn't matter. Now, let's say that you wanted to pick a lot of blocks. You can click and hold down your control key and then you can click as many blocks as you like. Once they're highlighted, you can say add to sketchbook. Another way of adding blocks to the sketchbook is you can go up here and tell it to select all blocks. So if I click that, all of the blocks in here are highlighted and then I could say add to sketchbook. And I don't wanna do that because then we'll have a whole lot of blocks over there. So I don't know how many I have over there now. So maybe I might add about maybe four more blocks just to make sure that I have enough blocks to play with. And now I'm going to add those to the sketchbook. Now remember we had this number here at 61. Now it's at 46 because the remainder blocks are over in the sketchbook waiting to be used. So that's why that number has changed. So we're going to tell it to reduce, to close, this category and now we want to go down here and say we want to get some border blocks so let's click the plus at border blocks and we can see the different categories under border blocks that we can choose from so i am just going to click on checked and you can see all of these different blocks here are in your in your border blocks so let's just click, we're just playing around. We'll click on that, we'll add that to the sketchbook. And we'll also go and pick a uh, triangular. And let's see, which one would we like to play with? We'll play with this one and say, add to sketchbook. Now notice we could have also clicked on this edit to block work table. Any of these blocks in here, if they're not 100% to your liking, you can edit them out. But that's another video. So we're going to come back and when we start doing edit blocks and things like that, I will show you how to do that. But for right now, we're just using the basic things that are set up in Electric Quilt. So now I just want to close this. And now when I go over here... I have my standard blocks here, but if I use this slider down here and pull over, it will start to show you all of the different blocks that I just added to this sketchbook. And then these last two were border blocks. So now we've got these blocks over here that we want to put over here. You have two things you can do. The first one, say you just want to make a quilt and all of your blocks are the same pattern but they could be different pat they could be different fabrics so i have this block highlighted and if i hold down my control key and then i go into one of the spaces and click it it will put the blocks in all of the it will fill all of the areas with the quilt block and then I can go back later when we get to the fabric tools here and we can change the fabric colors if we wanted it to be scrappy. However, because we're making a sampler quilt, that means that we have to click on each block to put into this quilt setting. You can go up and click edit, undo, but you don't have to do that because you can also just over you know, once you have a block in a place, you can go and over click it and then it will take over the block that's currently there. So I'm going to put those blocks back 
and then I'm going to come over here and click another block and you see how that one block has now replaced the other block so I don't have to undo if I don't want to you can always put something else over that block so I'm just going to go in here and just fill in this sampler quote with just random blocks I am not going to be stitching this quote up so I will not be doing any fancy work with it I just want to get the blocks into the grid and we need one more okay. so now we have a sampler layout with the blocks in one thing about electric quote you always want to save in steps so now I'm going to go back and save this into the sketchbook say you change your mind you don't want something that you do in the next step so you want to replace it out the option is that you can just go back into your sketchbook and pull up the previous version before you made those changes so that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you constantly are adding your design layout changes to the sketchbook so first off we got these blocks here and we could change any of the colors that we want we have a tool here called the fabric tools if you click on that it's going to change this section here and my computer is running slow because it's recording everything and it's been recording for a while and so now it's going to bring up various things that you can do with the fabric tools you've got a paintbrush a spray can a swap color an eyedropper one you can fussy cut the fabrics rotate the fabrics randomizer and then you can also open the fabrics library so we're just going to stay with the basic this is a basic EQ fabric library down here this is just what we're going to use today we're not going to be picky about any of that those are all individual lessons on how to get your own personal fabrics and photos into EQ so we'll talk about that in some future video so we've got this paintbrush tool and say we want to put a sashing here we've got all of these different fabrics here that we can pick so let's scroll down I'd like to see if they got something already in here that's black and white maybe not really but let's go with this uh, gray and so I want to put sashing that's gray and so I'm going to hold down my shift key click into one of the sashing spaces and it's going to put that fabric in all of those areas in the horizontal rows now I am going to click on a vertical row and when I click the sashing it will now put that sashing into the vertical row so now we've got some gray how about we use this maroonish color kind of have some little pink highlights in it and we're going to put that into our cornerstones so we'll click one cornerstone and it will place it into all cornerstones by holding down the control key the control key and clicking in one of the cornerstones and that's what's really cool about electric quote it doesn't make it so that you have to go and fill each one of these areas in individually now if you wanted these scrappy then you'll just go over to different of your uh, fabric patches and just click in a different uh, fabric if you wanted it to be scrappy so I'm going to go and do un undo color patch and it has taken back out the brown one and now I'm going to do edit undo again and it will take out the pink one and so you can undo you can step undo anything that you have done as well so now we have this sashing set I'm going to go ahead and add this into this sketchbook I like how it's looking so far and now we want to color in our frame that's around our sashed border so I think we'll just put in this black just for something to do again I'm going to hold down the control key and just 
press the black so now we're here at the border and here you can again have some fun you can come back over here you can go in and you can make all of these um, color scrappy so I'm just going to randomly pick some colors and put them into this grid And so all I'm doing is just clicking on a fabric and then just placing it in the grid randomly. I'm not worried about colors being balanced at this point. I'm just putting in some color so I can see what my quilt will look like if I had just a scrappy board. So now we have our completed quilt. Again, once you get something done and you think you like it, you want to go ahead and make sure that you add that into the sketchbook. Okay. So now we have this pretty sampler quilt and we have a sampler border that we can piece and we're technically done. And I just want to add a little bit more into this lesson. What if you wanted to have piece blocks in here? So we're going to go back into design and we're going to click on the block tool. Remember where we have these blocks? We could also place any of these blocks into our border section and EQ will automatically resize them to the appropriate size. So at the end of this area, I added two blocks that I thought we could put into our border. So if I click on this and then click border, it will automatically change the size of these blocks. If I hit down control and click in the border, it will place it all the way around the quilt top. I could also click and put this into the corners if I wanted it into the corners. Now, I'm going to go over here and hit add project to sketchbook because you may like that you may or may not like that and so but that's an option that you have and that's the nice thing about EQ is that you can play and then you can come in here and you can change these to any colors that you like just by how we put the colors in this portion of the quilt but we're still playing right now so I'm going to now go in and select this triangular border uh, block and I'm going to put that into the border. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to hit the button. Now notice your border looks totally different on the top and bottom than it does on the sides. One thing that you can do is you can rotate blocks. So I'm going to click on this rotate button and when I go up here say I want this white to be on the outside edge so I just rotate it so I click every block twice and then over here you can see where my triangles are pointing down they're also pointing down over here as well or up and down however you want to put that so I do want to rotate all of these so that the white is on the outside so they will all require me to click three times 
on the bottom the white is already down here on the bottom so I'm going to ignore that and then on the left side of the quilt I need to click it once to get these to change and again you can go in here and you can change all of these colors if you want to make it so that it's exactly what you want now let's go back to set block because we need to put this in the corner as well so let's go ahead and click on the corners and add this into the corner and you can see when you add this into the corner you can make a straight line by rotating if you look down here at the bottom and so I'm going to rotate and do the same thing to the top and that's how your completed quilt will look so we can go ahead and add that into the sketchbook again keep in mind that any of these borders you can go back in with your fabric tools option here and you can recolor these to get the color scheme that you want let's say we go back and say we want to set block and we just want to use one of the standard blocks that is provided say this nine patch block but remember we're in rectangles and this is a square so it's going to look totally different when we put it in so I'm going to click hold down the control key and click in one of the border places I'm also going to click in the corner spot and now you can see what this will look like with rectangles being put into the quilt setting so in your corners you do have your standard nine patch block and then here you have other blocks so let's go ahead and add this into our sketchbook as well and now we're going to click on the fabric tools and you could make this any colors that you want so let's say that we've got blue and white and then we also want to alternate it and turn some of them into say this maroonish color I'm just making up a color I don't want to do that I want to do edit undo <laughs> Okay, so we want to color in some of these areas with this maroonish color that we used here. So we're just going to make it so that the same color isn't touching each other. So we're just basically going to alternate every other row. Let me undo that. I don't want to do the corners yet. So I just basically want to do every other section so that I've got different colors. And notice that I just hit the border fabric by mistake I just went in with an undo and you can make this screen bigger for to get into small areas and I'll show you that in just a minute so we want this blue and we want to go back to burgundy and so we're just making this up keep that in mind just to show you that you can make different checkerboard layouts so this one this whole nine patch will have burgundy and then we'll go back into the burgundy patches here 
you're just trying to make some kind of a consistent layout when you're doing this so now you notice too that you also have double white so maybe you might want to change your white in this section to blue so we can use what's called an eyedropper if I click on the eyedropper and then I click in a spot it will bring up the color that's in that eyedropper and I can now drop that eyedropper wherever I have a burgundy piece I might want to put the blue eyedropper And then you have your sampler quilt looking something like that and it just makes your border look a little bit more complicated but you're still just working with very basic shapes so let's go ahead and save this into the sketchbook all right so let's say that this is the quilt top that we want to make if you look down here at the bottom again it will tell you exactly what size this quilt is we're making a quilt that's 62 by 77 and this is what we want we're now ready to proceed to stitching this quilt out so we have some other things that you can work with you want to be able to print some kind of instructions so that you can make this quilt so let's go up and click on print and export when you click under print you have certain items we have nothing clicked so the only thing that we can do is we can print this quilt as far as printing a color so let me click on that and then you have where you can just have an outline drawing of this quilt or you can have it showing fabrics I like to have it where it shows fabrics and then you also have options down here where you can print name print overall size print block outline print patch outline I like to have all of those things checked but you're like wait a minute what print what name up here at the top you have a button that says edit name currently the name of our quilt is an unnamed quilt so let's go ahead and name this quilt so once I click the edit it opens this block box up for me to type now I have to delete this word unnamed because otherwise a name is going to print so I want to just name this T quilt T quilt sampler quilt lesson and then I also have where I can do page setup I already have my page set up I'm not going to go into that because every machine has a different every computer you all have different printers so I'm not going to go into that you can go into fonts that you want this to print in I think I just use most of the default things but it will pull up a box and say what do you want to do I just use my header I use Arial size 12 so I'm just going to close that and then another thing that's nice about electric quilt is that you can preview it before you even quilt it out so notice up here on the screen you have T quilt sampler quilt lesson and I've misspelled the quilt <laughs> so forgive me for that and then it also has the overall size up here so let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better I just click the zoom button and then I uh, click and highlight the area that I want to zoom in on so I do have my quilt spelled wrong and that's okay and then I've got overall size up here now if I scroll down I'm just scrolling through the sampler quilt it's probably driving my screen recorder crazy it also tells you T quilt sampler quilt lesson in EQ8 project T quilts videos printed from EQ8 and this T quilt videos is the name of the actual file of the whole EQ process 
this T quilt sampler quilt lesson is just the name of this particular quilt. So don't get those confused. And then once I've previewed, I can zoom back out. Let's do that. So you can see the entire quilt again. And then I can co click print. And I'm not going to print this since I am not going to stitch this out but I just wanted to show you how this works. So I'm just going to click close so that I can back out of it. And then I want to click close again. So we normally would have had our entire quilt printed in hard copy at this point. Next, I wanna click on the yardage tab because what's really cool about EQ is if you plan something in EQ and you put in like fabrics if you know you're going to be cutting something out of the same fabric you put those in under the same fabric in eq it will give you the yardage of how much you need now you can put a click here that says you want to use fat quarters only if you're making a quilt from fat quarters but i'm just going to leave it at regular yardage and you can see here where you can tell it which which width of yardage you have i'm using the standard quilt fabric yardage and then i'm just going to tell it to preview and this is what's really cool. EQ will come up and give you as many pages as it takes for you to be able to print out your fabric requirements for your quilt. And I'm going to focus in over here on the fabrics that we added in. So I'm going to click zoom in. And then I'm going to come over here and use my highlight so we can see just this section. And you can see where over here, we use this burgundish maroon print. We used it 68 times. And the total amount of yardage that we need to use that fabric is 5 eighths of a yard. When we use this gray, we used it 31 times. We need 1 and 1 8 yard of fabric. When we use this black, we used it 4 times. We need 3 8 of a yard. And then the blue that we used, we used it 75 times. We need 5 eighths of a yard. And then this yellow, we used it 24 times and it's 1 fourth of a yard. Now EQ is normally pretty generous with your fabric requirements. So you should most definitely have enough. If you think that you may want to make your quilt larger, then you may want to purchase additional fabric. And again, up here at the top, you got the option where you can print this fabric requirements. We're going to zoom back out. You can also tell it to fit to screen and then we can also close and I'm not going to print this because I am not sewing this quilt top. I'm just showing you a process. Again, we want to close out this because we're not going to print it. So now you've got all of your yardages print out. How do you know what to cut, what to piece in electric quilt? How do you know what size these pieces are in electric quilt? The nice thing about it is that if you click on the block in Electric Quilt, it opens up more options over here. And it says, how do you want to piece this block? Do you want to use templates? Do you want to do foundation? Or do you want a rotary cut? So we want to rotary cut this block. So I'm going to go ahead and click on rotary cut. When you click on rotary cut, it asks you, what is your seam allowance width? I'm going to stay with the standard one quarter inch seam allowance, so it's 0 0.25. I want my print key block to be small. You can make it so that it's large. You can also do your rounding up to 1 8 inch or 1 16th of an inch or no rounding. I like to cut in 1 8 of an inch, so that's what I cut. I mean, that's the button that I will click. And then it says, number of copies that you want to print. I just want one copy. And so I'm going to go down here and you can do your whole page setup, your font you want it to print in. I'm just going to skip that part for right now because I'm going to show you on a preview what the printout will look like. So when you get to the printout, you have, this is considered your small block. So I think this is a sufficient size for me. A um, large block will take up about this much of the page and I just think that's a waste in printing just to make a block or for me but if you like it larger you can do that so I am uh, going to zoom in and show you some of these areas so 
So up at the top, you've got your block in the color way that it was inside of your quilt. And what it then does is it takes every shape in your quilt and give it an alphabet. So your half square triangles are gonna be labeled as one. Your rectangles here are going to be labeled as B. And then your center square is labeled as C. You only have three shapes in this quilt block. If you had a fourth shape, then it would be labeled as D. Once you've got your diagram up on the top, it's going to come down here and tell you what to cut. So for A, they're saying that to make this quilt block in the 12 inch finish size that we have in our quilt, that you need to cut a four and a half inch square and then cut it once diagonally. So this is your strip of fabric. You're cutting a four and seven eighths inch strip of fabric and then you're gonna cross cut that into four and seven eighths inch squares. Over here, it gives you the colorway. You need four of those patches to be in yellow and then four of those to be in this purple color. So you know when you make half square triangles, you will sometimes start with five inch squares. If you want to start with five inch squares when you're piecing this block, then instead of cutting four and seven eighths, go ahead and cut five inch squares. You wanna cut two in your yellow and two in your purple. And you know that when you do two squares and you cut them, you put them right sides together and you, you sew on each side of the diagonal seam that you're going to end up with two half square triangles. So that's why you only need to cut two squares. When you cut those squares in half, you'll end up with four patches. So you want to cut five inch squares. You want to cut, draw a line diagonally. Sew on both sides of the lines diagonally. Cut down the center once you've sewn. Press the seams open. And then you want to square these units up to four and a half. This is just giving you cutting instructions. It's not going to give you piecing instructions. Then you have your B area. You can tell it now. I mean, now we have the B section. It says that your B sections are cut from two and a half inch strips. And from those strips, you're going to cut four and a half inch segments. And these are going to be rectangles. And so you need to do that from two fabrics, your purple and your white. You need four of each fabric. And for your C fabric, you're cutting from a four and a half inch strip. You're gonna cut four and a half inch squares from that strip and you only need one patch. So technically, if you're just making a quilt with one of these blocks, you only need to have a four and a half inch square to finish this. So let me zoom back out just so you can see the entire thing again. Again, down here on the bottom, it tells you what size this block is when it's going to be sewn in and tells you the name of the file that it came from, which is great. So now we're just gonna close because I'm not going to print this. So now let's say that we so let me close again, I'm sorry. So let's just say that we have this block and we wanted to foundation piece it. You wouldn't foundation piece this block, but I just wanna show you that it is an option. So we can click on foundation piecing and then it has a, a sorting, a grouping of how it be, be foundation piece. And this is a pretty good foundation piece. So we just wanna tell it to preview. Now notice when we do the foundation piecing that our pattern, because this is a 12 inch block, it's no longer going to be able to print on one piece of paper. So let me zoom in so you can see exactly what's going on here. And so what will happen is your pattern will now print out on four pages. And when you get those four pages, you're going to have to use these dotted lines and line them up. So you will be taping these together in order to do foundation piecing. Now I am going to zoom in a little bit more because we can't see all of the numbers. So I'm just going to zoom in on one section now.
and you still can't hardly see the numbers but what I'm trying to show you is that each one of these sections have an alphabet and so they start with the center and they gave it the alphabet A and then the left column has your alphabet B and then on the right it has alphabet C and so it just starts you off in traditional foundation piecing where you have A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And so you're basically just stitching this like you would any, any other quilt block. When you get to the B section, notice that they don't start in the corner here and go B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6. When you're piecing this particular area, you have to be aware of the order in which you're piecing. And that's where foundation piecing is a whole nother different subject. But it starts out with B1, it goes to B2, then it adds B3 once you've got one and two sewn together, then it adds B3, and then here is your B4 section, B5, and then B6. Over on the C side would be the exact same thing just in reverse because of the side that it's on. But it's the exact same piecing. It's just rotated around. So I just want you to be aware that you could foundation piece this block. But this block would be harder to foundation piece than it would be to just go ahead and cut your pieces out. But I just wanted to show you that as an option. In addition... This same block, you could go ahead and do templates. Say you don't like rotary cutting. You can do templates, and it will add your quarter of an inch seam allowance around it. So I'm just going to click on preview so you can see that. Again, when we did this block, we only got three different shapes. We've got an A, a B, and a C. So it will give you your A template, and it has the dotted line around the solid line. The dotted line is for your seam allowance. And then you've got your B rectangle and your C square. And I'm just going to close out of here. I just wanted you to be aware that it does that as well. So now we're going to click close. Now this is where once I print a copy of my pattern, I like to start writing on my actual pattern the additional shapes that are coming up that I need to cut. So let's say what size sashing would I need to cut for this block. So if I click the sashing, it will give me the numbers. This sashing finishes at 3 by 12. So that means that I would have to cut my pieces 12 and 1 half by 3 and 1 half. And then the next thing that we would have to know the cut measurement for would be our cornerstone. So if you click on it, you see that it says it's three by three. And when you cut those, you would be cutting three and one half by three and one half inch squares. This is our corner block when I clicked on it to know what I needed to rotary cut. They're just basically two and a half inch squares that we're using here. And then you've got four in one colorway, four in your second colorway, and then one in your third colorway. And so you can write that down if you need to on your, on your pattern. And so now I want to just close this. And now we've got our border blocks that we also have 
in the quilt. And this border block is 10 by 6. And so I want to click on rotary cutting again. And then when I click on preview, it will give me all of the measurements for this block. Saying that these are all rectangles. These rectangles are all two and a half by three and three sevenths. So that is what you would need to use to print these rectangles. So let me blow this up so you can see the actual numbers here. And then it also again tells you how many you need of each patch to make each block. So you will have to multiply this out by the number of blocks that are inside of your actual quilt top. Okay. So I am just going to go ahead and end this EQ lesson here. I think we have been going for quite a bit of time. If you have any questions about this lesson, please leave it down in the description field. If you've got some EQ topics you want me to discuss, please leave that as well. Next time we're going to work on how to design a quilt block in EQ. That will be our next lesson. And then we're going to start talking about some of the things that you can do with panels, t-shirt quilts and things like that but that's it for this one see you next time everybody thank you so much for watching please share this series with your quilting friends and i will see you next time bye bye